this is Karen. Hi, everybody. I'm Shane. Today we're looking at part one of our story called "The Man Who Would Be King," and the vocabulary words are associate. Associate. Craig will have dinner with some business associates on Friday. Warn. Warn. Cindy's mother warned her not to get too close to the hot stove. Ah. <sighs> Assistance. Assistance. I could really use your assistance on this project. You got it. Thank you. Recognize. Recognize. It's been so long since we've seen each other that I didn't recognize you at first. Really? Looking good, girl. It's been that long. Yeah. Suffer. Suffer. Fans of the sports team suffered yet another painful loss. <sighs> So we're talking about a really interesting story called "The Man Who Would Be King." Okay, so we've got some characters we need to know about. Okay, who are the characters?、Uh, okay, so we have a reporter. That's right, newspaper reporter. We don't know his name.、Mm -hmm. And we've got somebody named Peachy Carnahan. 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 Peachy Carnahan. Okay, and Daniel. Dravit. Dravit. That's right. Okay, so Peachy, we'll call him Peachy. Peachy sees a reporter. On a, a train, and he needs to get a message to his buddy, right?、Mm -hmm. Dravit. Yeah, and then next we see them with the reporter telling them the story. What are they going to do? What's their plan? They have an upcoming plan.、Yeah. They want to go to Kafiristan, Afghanistan. To do what? To be kings. They want <laughs> to rule over the locals, and that just sounds absurd. Sounds crazy, and I. I think that the reporter thinks these guys are just going to get themselves killed. That's right? right. They're going to get in really, very big trouble, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not a very good plan. Exactly. But he helps them. He like gives them a map and, and the book, some information, right? So two years passed. Two years pass, and Peachy. Right,、mm -hmm. comes he he ends up on the doorstep of the reporter carrying a bag, carrying a bag, and the reporter didn't even recognize him because he looks so awful.、Yeah. He was in an awful state. Right, and I guess he said they had a really hard time when they were in Afghanistan, and they had to eat their own camel and, and their, mules. their mules. That's right. Wow.、So、I guess they really went through a lot. Okay, <laughs> let's find out about these crazy fellas. In today's article, <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy. The man who would be king. On a train in India, a newspaper reporter meets another passenger by the name of Peachy Carnahan. Peachy asks the reporter to relay a message to his associate, Daniel Dravo. Today's lesson is called "The Man Who Would Be King," Part One. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and I'm Mike. So, the man who would be king—isn't this what we would call a prince? A young man is the son of a king. His father is a king, or or a queen. A person who one day will become, become or will become a king, a king.、Sure. Is, is a prince. Okay. All right. So All right. there we go. That's the story. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and, and we'll、it. see you、that's、next、it. time.、Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not that simple. We actually have. Two days, so let's start reading right now. The man who would be king. On a train in India, a newspaper reporter meets another passenger by the name of Peachy Carnahan, which, by the way, is an awesome name. Peachy Carnahan. Peachy Carnahan is a pretty, pretty cool、peachy. name. It's a peachy key it's, name. It's a peachy name. Peachy's kind of an old slang, old way,、uh, slang way of saying something's great or good. I'm, I'm feeling peachy. Or peachy、so、keen. Peachy keen. So Peachy Carnahan is this character's name, an unusual but very cool, interesting name. Let's find out what's going on on this train journey in India. It says Peachy. Asks the reporter to relay a message to his associate Daniel Travo. Yeah,、okay. pass pass along this yeah, message for me. That's right.、Yeah. To relay something is just to pass it from one person to another to get it to its ultimate destination. In this case, the ultimate destination, the end of this message, will be with this associate Daniel Travo. What is an associate? It could be a lot of different things. It's someone you know, someone you're familiar with, someone you might work. 
work with, someone you might spend your time with. We might use uh, words like colleague or coworker to talk about an associate. Maybe someone who's in a club or uh, the member of some society along with you could be an associate too. You wouldn't really use it for a good friend or something like that, but you know, someone you know and you interact with in more of a sort of professional kind of way. An official or an formal way. Exactly, not on a sort of a friend level. For example, Craig will have dinner with some business associates on Friday. Yeah, we could just say some colleagues. Yeah. That would be the same be, for that they'll sentence. They'll be doing some business. They're not going out to dinner to have fun with nope. one another like friends would. No. Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll have more of this story. Hopefully, we'll have more Peachy Carnahan too. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。这一次要读的故事是英国作家吉普林的作品，叫做《The Man Who Would Be King》，要做国王的人。那故事一开始是在印度的一列火车上，有一名报社记者遇到另一名乘客，叫做 Peachy Carnahan。那这名乘客就请记者帮他转达一个讯息给他的伙伴 Daniel Dravot。刚刚老师们就聊到说 ，Peachy Carnahan 这个名字好酷好有趣哦。他们就有提到 Peachy， 如果是在桃子 P E A C H 后面加上 Y， 用 Peachy 或是 Peachy King， 在口语中可以用来形容很好的、很棒的。好，那我们再来看看单字 Associate，Associate， Associate, 它表示伙伴。同事或是合伙人，那补充单字 relay，relay 它是动词，表示转达、传达。麦克老师刚刚说到，那个讯息最终目的是要传到 Daniel d r a v o t 那边，老师就用到 ultimate 这个字来形容最后的、最终的，它是拼作 u l t i m a t e ultimate。接下课文中 ，The man who would be king。Despite his feeling that Peachy is a bit of a shady character, the reporter does as he is asked. A few days later, both Peachy and Dravo turn up at the reporter's office with details of their upcoming plan. They were going to Kafiristan, Afghanistan, to become kings and rule over the locals. The reporter warns them about the dangers, but their minds were made up. They ask for his assistance, and he, believing they will be killed on this adventure, gives them a map and books about the area. Okay, let's continue reading from our story. We'll have more Peachy Carnahan right now. Get this: despite his feeling that Peachy is a bit of a shady character, the reporter does as he is asked. Oh yeah, I'll take your message and I'll pass it on for you. But、mm. here we here we learn that Peachy is a bit of a shady character, or seems that way. Yeah. By the way, if someone is Shady. Let's say you're saying that you don't quite trust them. They seem suspicious to you. Yeah, they might have some kind of secret plan, or they might be lying to you a little bit if they come across as being shady. But even though Peachy seems shady, this reporter decides to relay the message. As he was asked, so then we read. A few days later, both Peachy and Dravo turn up at the reporter's office with details of their upcoming plan. Interesting. So the reporter thought, as long as he passed on the message, that would be the end of it for him. But no, because later these two associates, Peachy and Dravo, they turn up, they show up, they come to the reporter's office in a surprising way, in an unexpected way. With details of their upcoming plan, they have a plan. It's coming up, and here are the details. Here are all the facts and information about the plan. So, well, what's the plan?、Uh, they were going to Kafiristan, Afghanistan, to become kings and rule over the locals. They were、they're、going just, there to become kings. They're going to go to this place in Afghanistan,、uh -huh. this wild place off the map at this point in time, and they're going to show up. And become the kings there. They're going to lord and rule over the people who live there, the locals. This is kind of a shady plan. Yes,、This、sounds weird. Anyways, the reporter warns them about the dangers of their trip, but their minds were made up. Yeah, we're going, and we're going to become kings. This is awesome. By the way, here it says that the reporter warns them. I.e., the reporter says, "Hey." 
be careful, okay? Watch your step. Something scary maybe or dangerous or risky awaits you, so be careful. Yes, when you say things like this to someone else, you are warning them. For example, Cindy's mother warned her not to get too close to the hot stove. Oh, okay, so be careful, the be careful. stove is hot, don't touch the stove. Or be careful, if you go to that foreign country and be, try to become a king, the local people won't like it. That's, mm. that's a good thing yeah. to be warned about. Yeah, who are you to be our king? You just yeah. showed up on a, you arrived on a train and now you're the king, that's not gonna work probably. It seems pretty weird. Yeah. But anyways, Peachy and Dravo, they seem to know that their plan won't work without a bit of help. So we read, they ask for his assistance. And he, this is the reporter, and he, believing they will be killed on this adventure, gives them a map and books about the area. Ah, okay, so they came to him, this reporter, for assistance. Assistance is a noun, and as I mentioned earlier, they came to the reporter for help. Help and assistance are basically the same thing. If you're asking someone for assistance, you're asking someone for help. You need them to sort of add their efforts to yours in order to succeed in doing something. If you ask someone for assistance on the street, you might be lost and you need someone to give you help to show you the right way. In this case, they needed help, they needed information, and that came from the reporter in a map and a book. Oh, interesting. Let's look at our example sentence for assistance. I could really use your assistance on this project. And yes, if you put in the word help in that sentence, it would be just fine as well. We'll take a quick break, and then with your assistance, we'll be back to finish off our article. 刚刚说到火车上那个乘客 Peachy Carnahan 请记者帮他转达讯息虽然那位记者觉得这个人好像有点可疑可是还是有照他的要求来做好我们文中用到形容词 a bit of a shady character 这表示有一点可疑的人那这样老师刚刚也用到suspicious这个字 它是拼作suspicious suspicious可以用来形容可疑的起疑的或是怀疑的好故事接着提到 几天后呢,那两个人,也就是Peachy Carnahan还有Daniel Dravot 带着他们计划出现在记者的办公室里面他们打算要去阿富汗一个叫做卡佛瑞斯坦的地区去那边要称王要统治当地人那即使记者有警告他们这个计划的危险性可是这两个人已经下定决心了他们就要求记者协助而
for he was in an awful state. So it's a big surprise. Peachy Carnahan's back two years later, but the reporter almost couldn't tell that it was him because Peachy was in an awful state. He looked terrible. His hair was dirty and matted. His clothes were ripped. He's he, crippled. He's crippled. It looks like he was 20 years older than he was, even though it was just two years ago. So the reporter could barely recognize him. Amazing. What has happened to Peachy Carnahan? He must have a story to tell. Anyways, here, yes, to recognize something is to identify that thing. When you look at something and you can tell what it is, you have recognized it. So let's say you see a friend, a familiar face. You can recognize that face immediately. You know who they are. For example, it's been so long since we've seen each other that I didn't recognize you at first. Yeah, now that I've got a good view of you, okay, I can know, I know who you are. But before you looked different, I couldn't recognize you. Mm, all right, so let's hear Peachy's story and hopefully that will explain where he's been for two years and why he looks so terrible right now. We read seemingly driven mad Peachy tells the reporter that he and Dravo suffered great hardships on their journey to Kafiristan and were even forced to eat their own camels and mules along the way. Wow, this Ew. sounds like a really difficult, long, and dangerous journey. So sounds like they've suffered, yeah. They definitely have suffered. Seemingly driven mad. This kind of basically means it, it seems like if you ask the reporter, he might guess that Peachy has gone mad. He's crazy, gone crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe he's just really tired and needs to relax. Or maybe he really has had some mental illness, but he seems kind of crazy right now. And he told him about the great hardships, the terrible difficulties and terrible things that happened as they suffered through this long journey. To suffer, this verb means to undergo some kind of terrible experience. All right, so maybe you've suffered from a lot of pain in your teeth. Well, you should mm. go and see a dentist. If you suffer from poverty in your life, well, you've grown up or you live in a situation where you don't have enough money. Having pain all the time, not having money, having troubles in your life with your relationships, these kinds of things, if they go on for a long time, we can really use this word suffer. It's sort of a terrible experience that goes on and on and on. For example, fans of the sports team suffered yet another painful loss. The team was the champions five years ago. These days they can't even get one win against the, the weakest team. So the fans suffer. Anyways, Peachy Carnahan mm. and Mr. Dravo there, they got where they were going. It okay. wasn't easy, but they got there. Mm -hmm. But get this, when they finally arrived, when they got there, they used their guns to help a group of locals win a civil war. They, they're already suffering and now they've got to participate in a war, a civil war. Wow, what a story. All right, folks, with that, today's story is now in the books, but don't worry, another part of our story is coming up soon. 那麼經過兩年之後,有一名白卡的人他就帶著一個袋子出現在記者門前的台階,那個人竟然是Peachy Carnhan,一開始記者還幾乎認不出來,因為他的狀況看起來很糟。好,單字recognize, recognize,它是動詞就表示認出來,辨認出來。好,那麼doorstep,doorstep這可以用來指說門前的台階。好,還有文中我們用到過去分詞crippled, Crippled 就是形容跛脚的伤残 Civil War 就表示内战，还有用到hardship则是指困苦艰难。那我们最后来看单字 suffer。Suffer 它表示遭遇承受，通常是指承受不好的事情。好，那么麦寡在解释这个动词的时候，还用到undergo，undergo它也有经历遭受的意思。好，那么以上是这个讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。
大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有两个，第一个是 despite， 第二个是 as 做准关系代名词的用法。好，我们先来学 despite。Despite 表示尽管，虽然它是介系词，后面要接名词或动名词。例如 ，Despite feeling sick, she went to work. 尽管身体不舒服，她还是有去上班。好，那同学们应该都有学过 though, although 这些字也都可以用来表达虽然尽管，可是它们是连接词，后面要连接子句。那这时候，如果你想要用 despite 来接子句，必须先用名词同位语，像是 the fact 之类的，然后再接 that 子句。像我们可以用 despite the fact that 主词加动词，用这种方式来接子句。好，那我们来练习看看哦。Although it was raining, they still went hiking. 尽管在下雨，他们还是去践行。那考考你哦，如果我们要把这个例句用 despite 来改写，哪一个句子是正确的呢？好，第一句 ，despite it was raining, they still went hiking。第二句 ，despite the fact that it was raining, they still went hiking。想好了吗？如果你选第一个句子就是错的，因为 despite 它是介系词，后面不能直接接子句哦。所以你要选第二句，叫做 despite the fact that it was raining, they still went hiking。好，最后我们来学 as 当准关系代名词的用法。准关系代名词意味着。它本身是连接词，可是又像关系代名词一样，兼具了代名词的功能，用来代替前面或是后面所叙述的情况或是事实。那么 ，as 当做准关系代名词的时候，它的意思就是如同怎么样，正如怎么样，可以用来代指整个主要子句或者是子句的一部分。我们用例句来看会更清楚。Daniel will be taking three months off. As was mentioned in the meeting, 正如会议上所提到的 ，Daniel 将要请三个月的假。哎，这时候句子里面的 as 表示如同、正如、怎么样嘛？那它本身是连接词，同时又用来代指前一句 Daniel 将要请假的这件事情。As was mentioned in the meeting, 就表示说这件事就如同在会议上所提到一样。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。Welcome to English in Action. Ow, ow, ow. I'm Holly. Hi, everybody. I'm Shane. Okay, so what's today's topic, Shane? 你不用打吵打闹的。不用打吵打闹。Okay, so if you 常常这样子吗？应该是脾气都不好、嗯，对不对？嗯、他脾气很非常不好。<笑>你比你不好是没错，<笑>嗯、没错。好了，如果你身边有大吵大闹的同学朋友呢，接下来这几句会很实用。来，进、啊、入对话。Pay attention. Uh, why is our food taking so long? Calm down. You don't have to make such a scene. Uh, Yeah. So, so in this, so you were just making like a a scene, right? I was making a scene. A, a little bit. I mean, you should be more patient. But why do we say make a scene? This is some easy, some scene. Oh, scene, scene. Well, like scenery. Scene, 不是就是电影里面一幕一幕的这样子。对对，是感觉你在演，就是打演，就是演的很大。对对。哎，为什么？剧情很多的。啊，对，很多人会开始看你。就是重点。Oh, okay. 如果你是我，我跟你在一起，我就觉得很丢脸，所以哎，不要 make a scene， don't make a scene。Oh, OK， 可是我就想 make a scene 啊，我就是要大家看我呢。啊<笑>， or you can say you don't have to throw a tantrum。啊， OK， so tantrum <咳>这个字其实就是大发脾气，对不对？就是有一点歇斯底里、没有逻辑的那一种发脾气。对，然后就是小朋友，对，小朋友开始开始发疯。来示范一次。啊！不要！对，就是这样子。樣然后注意这个字<笑> ，tantrum 就是要跟 throw 这个字，不不是真的丢哦。你看，就是有点哭哭啼啼的。<笑>对对对对对。So throw a tantrum. How、okay. no? You can say, "Don't be such a drama queen." Drama queen. I, I'm such a drama queen. You are a drama queen. 
。好了 ，drama queen 这个词呢，意思就是、啊、呃，你很喜欢。就是被注目到，你很喜欢制造那个抓马，中文现在是这样讲吗？啊、<笑>你很喜欢制造一些麻烦，是吗？对，然后就还是一样，你就是希望大家都会注意到你，所以就是刷存在感那种 drama queen， 就是很喜欢，嗯嗯嗯，看我看我，对，刷,刷一下存在感，对<笑> ，OK OK， so。In the future, if you're not sure how to say something in English, 看我们就对了。You don't have to make a scene. You don't have to make a scene. You don't have to throw a tantrum. You don't have to throw a tantrum. Don't be such a drama queen. Don't be such a drama queen.